Hey everybody, welcome back to Dead Man Deezies. Akanji study sessions. We got 12 new vocabulary words from JLPT and one list for you today. And as always, if we see new words today that we don't, um, new, if, if Akanji is new in a word today, we're going to write it down 10 times, go over its readings, its meanings, and how to remember it based on the radicals that make up the kanji. And if we see a new word, but it's made of kanji, we already know we're just going to go over the meanings of the two kanji and how they come together to make our new word. I don't think we have any new kanji today, but we do have 12 new words. Uh, if you don't want to listen to me write things out and say them out loud, head on over to YouTube and you can skip ahead to the explanations for the kanji and the words. And if you just want these word lists, head on over to Google Drive. Our first word of the day is kultai. Kul on the left side for after or back, and tai on the right side for retreating or withdrawing. So kultai is to withdraw in a backwards motion. Kultai is retreat or falling back. Kultai is. Kultai is retreat. Falling back, going in the opposite direction. It also means specifically the backspace key on a keyboard, which is fun. Cold tight. Cold tight is backspace on the keyboard or retreating and falling back. Cold tight is the backspace key on a keyboard, but also to retreat or fall back. Also, be a waning. Cold tight is retreat or going backwards and retreating. Literally translated backwards retreat. Cold tight. Cold tight is withdrawal or retreat. Number two is wabishi. Our new miserable, wretched, lonely, dreary, shabby, or comfortless. E adjective is wabishi. Wabishi. No kanji to remember here, just wabishi. Wabishi. It's comfortless, wretched, or miserable. Wabishi. Next we have netto, netsu on the left side for heat or fervor, and to on the right side for boiling or hot water. This is really just hot water or can be cold water. It's just another kanji for water. This is the kanji used for uh, baths and hot springs. Netto is literally translated hot or heated water. Boiling water is netto. Netto is boiling or heated water. Netsu on the left side for heat and fervor, and to on the right side for hot water. Netto is boiling water. Netto this. Netto is boiling water. Is boiling water. Netto this is boiling water. Netto. Number four is iku do. Iku on the left side is how many, how much. Um, Kind of how long how far it's like asking the the kanji for asking about amounts or numbers of time and do on the right side is either a counter for degree or amount of something but can also be a counter for occurrences and number of times so iku do is how many times or how often iku do is how many times or how often iku do this how many times or how often? Ikudo is how many times or how often? Ikudo this. How many occurrences? Ikudo. Literally translated how many occurrences? Ikudo is how often or how many times? 
クドです。How many times? How often? Igudo des. Number five is Gyakuten. Gyaku on the left side for reversing or going the opposite way, and ten on the right side for revolving. So this is revolving and going the opposite direction. A sudden change, a reversal, a turnaround, or it can also mean a comeback in sports. A Gyakuten is turning around and going the opposite direction. Way or facing the opposite way. Gyuk ten is turning around, is literally opposite facing and revolving. So it's sudden changing up and going the opposite way is Gyuk ten. Turning around or revolving to face the other way. Gyuk ten is a sudden change or turning in the opposite direction. A comeback in sports is a gyuk ten. Gyuk ten. Number six is the ua te. Ua on the left side for the upper. And te on the right side for part.、Um, it literally means upper hand, but it means the upper part of things. Don't, we don't, they don't say upper hand like he has the upper hand. They don't say that in、uh, Japanese. I'm not sure what that I'm sure that comes from some Western specific sport, the upper hand. I think talking about handshakes, maybe. Yeah, that's probably why they don't use it. If it's talking about handshakes, they don't never really did. Handshakes in Japan. Ua te is the upper part of something. Can also mean the right side of a stage, or someone is the ua te if they're more skillful by comparison. Ua te is literally translated the upper hand, but actually means the upper part of something. The ua te is the upper part of something, or the right side of a stage is the ua te. Ua te is the upper part of some thing or area. Ua te desu. Upper part of something. Number seven is kanze. Kan on the left side for an entrance or kind of a connecting point, and ze on the right side for a tax. So kanze is your connection or gateway for taxation. This is a tax on just connecting to a country. The import tax is a kanze. It can also be、uh, duty or customs, but I like import tax. This I think is the closest definition. It's literally a connecting tax, but it's an import tax essentially. Kanze is a duty or an import tax. You are paying a tax for connecting to Japan as a country. A kanze is a connecting tax, literally translated, but is an import tax. Kanze is an import tax, a tax for connecting to Japan as a gateway. Kanze desu. Kanze. Kanze is an import tax, aka a connection tax. Number eight is a pretty easy one with all katakana debut. A debut is a debut, so doing something for the first time. A debut is directly from the French debut. Debut is doing something for the first time, aka a debut. Debut. Is a debut. Debut is a debut. Number nine is kinshi. 
kin on the left side for close and shi on the right side for sight or looking. So kin shi is literally near sight or near looking. Myopia or nearsightedness is kin shi. Kin shi can also mean um, something's forbidden, so be careful about this one. Kin shi. Kin shi. I wonder if it's kin shi or kin shi. Let's look up how to pronounce this one. I'm not sure it's pronounced the exact same way as kimchi the um, how to pronounce kimchi Japanese. <laughs> kimchi. Somebody. Kinshi. Short sightedness. Ugh. That's not it. Why don't you just say it in Japanese, please? Say it. Say it in Japanese. Kinshi. So Kinshi is close sightedness. Let's look up Kinshi for um, band. Kinshi. Okay, so here's Kinshi for banning. Kinshi to Kinshi 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 Sounds like there might be a little bit more of a emphasis on that first syllable in uh, short sightedness. Kinshi. 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 And Kinshi for Kinshi. 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 Skent did both of these. Kinshi. This is the same guy. Kinshi. Kinshi. He pronounced them the same way. I'm gonna say you can. It's these are these are homonyms. Kinshi is myopia or near sightedness. Kinshi des. Kinshi is close looking. Literally translated, but means near sightedness. Kinshi is near sightedness. Myopia. Kinshi. Kinshi is nearsightedness. Number 10 is a Kenchi. Kenchi. Ken on the left side again for looking or seeing, and Chi on the right side, this time for ground. So this is the ground from which you are looking at something, aka your point of view. A Kenchi is another synonym that we've learned for a point of view. Kenchi. Tatsiba to. Kenchi is a point of view. Kinshi is a viewing ground, literally translated, but means a point of view. Kenshi is a point of view. Kenshi is a point of view. Number 11. 
is sayol. Sa on the left side for creation or production of something, and yol on the right side for utilization or the use of something. So sayol has some creative, is a creation of use, if you will. Sayol is a function, effect, an action, or operation. And I think the best way to get an idea of what I'm talking about is uh, through uh, some examples. Example one, san wa kinzoku wo fukumu ooku no mono ni sayou suru. Acid, san, acts on many things including metals. San wa kinzoku, metal, wo fukumu ooku no mono. Kinzoku wo fukumu ooku no mono. Lots of things including uh, many things. Ooku no mono ni sayou suru. Ni sayou suru, meaning it has an effect on them. So many things including metals. This is really saying lots of things that are made of metals. Lots of things made of metals or lots of things that consist of metals are affected by acids. San wa kinzoku wo fukumu ooku no mono ni sayou suru. Effect. So it's like affecting. Sayo is an effect, function, action, operation. Let's look at another example. Nikko sunbeams wa hifu. Hifu is another term for skin that I did not know. Hifu. Nikko sunbeams wa hifu. Skin ni sayou suru. Sunbeams act on the skin or have an effect on the skin. An effect or a function. Sayou suru. Sayou is an effect or an action with the kanji for creating a use. Sayou. Literally translated create a use when actually means have some, to have an effect or function on. Sayou is an effect function or operation sayo this sayo is an effect function or operation and finally number 12 is kette kette zukeru kette zukeru is to decide to dictate or to determine with tsukeru on the right side for to attach or to append and ketsu on the left side for to decide and te on the right side for to establish or decide. So kette is to an establish, to establish a decision or an established decision. Kette. And skeru is to attach. So this is literally you're attaching your own decision to something. To decide, to dictate, or to determine is kette suru. Literally to attach a decision to something. is to determine, fix, or decide. That's going to be all for today. Let's go back to the top, make sure we put some good uh, pins in our brain where all these memorizations are going to go. Make sure you're making flashcards out of these to get full memorizing power. Our first word of the day was a retreat, a fallback, or a reversing with tai. Oh, on the left side for backwards and tight on the right side for withdrawing or retreating. Give me one second. Our next word was uh, miserable, wretched, lonely, dreary, or shabby with wabi shi. Wabi shi, our new word with no kanji that we need to know right now. Wabishi is miserable, wretched, or shabby. Boiling water is netto. Netsu on the left side for heat. And to on the right side for water or hot water. Netto is boiling water. How many times or how often is iku do? Iku on the left side for how. How many or how much. And do on the right side for our counter for occurrences. So iku do literally means how many occurrences. A sudden change or a reversal is a gyakuten. 
Gyaku on the left side for turning around to face the opposite way, and Ten on the right side for revolving. Gyak Ten is a comeback in sports or a turnaround or a sudden change. The upper part of something is the Ua Te. Ua on the left side for above, and Te on the right side literally for hand, but just talking about a part, the Ua Te is the upper part of something. An import tax, aka a tariff, is a kanze. Kan on the left side for connecting, and ze on the right side for tax. Kanze is a connection tax. Doing something for the first time is directly from the French debut. A debut is a debut, is a debut, as we say in English. Myopia, or nearsightedness. Hmm is kinshi. Kin on the left side for close or nearby, and shi on the right side for viewing or inspection. Kinshi is nearsightedness. A point of view is a ken chi. Ken on the left side again for to see, and shi on the right side for ground. <clears throat> a function, effect, action, or operation is sayo. Sa on the left side for production or creation, and yo on the right side for a use. And finally, to decide, to dictate, or to determine is our new transitive verb, kete zukeru. Kete zukeru. Ketsu on the left for a decision, te in the middle for establishment, and zukeru on the right side for attaching or appending. Kete zukeru is to attach a decision to something, really. Thanks for watching today, everybody. Hope you had a good Sunday, and I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Domo, arigatou gozaimashita.